Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Today what I'm going to be doing is taking a look at what you get inside this box right here, this game. This is a copy of Viticulture World, an expansion for Viticulture that makes the game a cooperative game. Now it's not a legacy game per se, but you are going to visit different cities. And because of that, a lot of people don't want to know what are in the city. So it kind of has spoiler alerts. So I don't want to spoil what's in the various different cities. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up, show you all the components, but I won't be showing off a lot of individual cards because I don't want to spoil anything. But I do want to see what's in the box. Note, I have not played this yet. I have not checked it out, but I do have to thank Stonemaier Games for sending us a review copy of this. I am really looking forward to checking this out. Viticulture is one of my favorite games. So first off, what I'm going to do is tip the camera down so you can see what's going on, but I'm going to cut the shrink off first, and then we'll take a look at what you get inside the box for Viticulture World. All right, here we have my copy of Viticulture World. All I've done is take off the shrink. One of the things I got to point out that I thought was really nice is this edge. But, like, that's cool for people who store their games flat, like me. I dig that they did that. For those of you who store your games vertical. Makes it look like a book. That's a nice touch. I don't remember ever noticing that before. So, before we open it up, here's a just quick look at the back of the box. It kind of shows what we're going to have in here. Uh, of course, it's showing with some of the components, I think, from the original Viticulture as well. So let's take a look at what we get. Starting off with just a rule book. Oh, this has a nice finish that they used in Tapestry, the nice linen finish on it. So this shows the cooperative expansion. So I'm going to move some stuff here in a bit. So what we have is our list of components. The compatibility and initial setup, which will be interesting about this because there are two different versions of Viticulture, the original and the essential. Uh, one of the things I plan to do when I review this is seeing how well it works with the original, because I do not own the, the essential version of Viticulture. I have the base game that first came out and didn't bother upgrading. Uh, we have a general setup, individual player setup. I say that's a nice setup page. Uh, we have general rules. Um, what's going on in spring, because I know there's like a first place you play. Worker placement, showing some of these interesting new meeples and stuff like that. Um, what happens in summer, year, game end, winter, and so on. Then we have, I'm going to guess, the Atoma rules. Uh, they're not actually called that. They're actually the Buratino rules for solo play. So we do have now solo play rules for Viticulture. That alone is going to be a big draw for some gamers, which does feature various Atoma cards and so on to take your work placement spots. Then we move on to, I'm gonna forget exactly what these are called. Content deals, innovation tiles, that's it, sorry, innovation tiles. We have a set of innovation tiles, um, square ones and rectangular ones. And those are the backs for the innovation tiles. There's one board here. Um, nice big text, I appreciate that as someone with vision problems, though I gotta say the, the white text on the white background on this one card is a little bit annoying. Oh, it looks like they did it on this one too. So some of the winter buildings are a little hard to read, but it is kind of nice to have the text right on there. And these are the starting tiles for solo play. So the, the, there's, there's some tiles here just for solo play and they're marked with Atoma symbols. Oh, I see it. Yeah, this kind of wraps around to show which ones are for Atoma. Now we have what impresses me about this, a brand new board. And look at that insert. We actually have a nice plastic insert, but first I'm going to show off this board. It is a two-sided board. So what we have is this is, is your normal board, but if you look, there's new spots. Put these new innovation tiles to cover up what's already there. Um, you've got your spring area. You have the new scoring track, which now goes past 25. Um, you've got something with maple leaves down here. It looks like maple leaves. And I know this is a brand new spot for something new with this expansion. And then we have the urine checklist as well. Now the other side doesn't have all that new stuff. So we don't have the spot for the cards over here, for example. So we do have a basically a full two-sided board with its own scoring track on each side, where you start everything else. Um, then you have the spring bonus over here. So a brand new board. Then we get into the actual box insert. So props right away for this box insert. This is extremely nice looking. So I'm going to take that off. 
And I'm going to flip it around this way. So one of the things Jamie has been doing, and I do applaud him for doing this, is making his games more environmentally conscious. So we have biodegradable bags and the cards aren't individually sleeved. Instead, they have paper slips. Now, the problem with this, you can see the sleeves, the cards, slip sleeves, have slid off most of these cards, and they're now kind of mixed up. And they're probably not exactly where they should be. Though I gotta say, environmental aspect, these all have very clear backs. It's better the game be for the environment than be perfectly organized when it shows up to me. I have to assume all these blue ones go together. So it's gonna make things interesting trying to show this off because of that. So we're gonna start with the biodegradable bags. So what these are, are hats for your spring workers. These are little rubber hats that go on top of the meeples, which is pretty cool. Then we have the same thing for your winter workers, but in blue. Blue, these are, these are rubbery, kind of see the squish, blue rubber hats. Then we have two new wooden trackers. Um, one's like influence, the other's prestige, something like that. So we have a bell and what to me looks like a maple leaf. That could just be my Canadianism coming through. I'll put that back in this bag. Then we have a protective card that's literally just there so the cards don't get scratched. I'm um, showing off some of the new buildings you get. I got to say the card art looks really good. Um, see if the backs are here. So we have new new cards, blue cards. Spring cards. Now, from what I understand, these aren't actually new cards. They are to replace existing cards you have to make them compatible with the expansion. So these are all replacement cards for cards you should already own and what makes some of the expansions compatible with this new cooperative version of play. So these don't aren't new. They replace what you already have. So we're going to put that back over here. And so the big thing with Viticulture World is you're going to play the game and you're going to travel to different parts of the world that are each represented by their own deck. And I don't know how many are in here. I'm trying to figure out how these should be held together. Like these Atoma, are they supposed to be in their own? Yes. I'm sure I could figure it out from the rule book, but I was hoping to show off at least one of the decks. So yes, this is the, the, the solo mode deck which again has a protective card just to show you what's there. And these basically just show you where what sp worker placement spots the AI takes. Okay, so I know the first place you're going to visit in the world is like Green Gully or something like that, which is represented by this deck. So you're going to remove the protective card and then you're going to get the instru instructions that introduce it. And it tells you this is Green Gully. This is difficulty introduction. And it walks you through it. And what I thought was really interesting here and kind of blew me away is people might recognize that art style from another. Taking a look at this card, this is going to look familiar to fans of Stonemeyer games. Uh, based on that art in that corner, there's obviously, it looks like Jamie's games may all exist in the same world. And it does say Azure Forever King at the beginning. So I got to say that's a really cool tie in to Charterstone right there. So what you have is a bunch of cards. Again, I don't want to spoil anything. So it go ahead and goes through how to play it, how to use it, what's going on, and everything here that walks you through how to play everything. So this is like the introductory version. Now, in addition to this, there is another pack, which I'll be opening at the end of all this, that has an even better intro to the game. So this is one of the sets, one of the worlds you can visit is the world of Green Gully with its airships and is obviously inspired by Charterstone. Uh, then we have a couple of Tomata cards. And then, for example, here we have what looks like Egypt. And if you look at it, it's Africa. So you're visiting Africa. Now, this I am not going to change the focus on. I want you to not be able to read exactly what it says there. And again, it's going to introduce it. And then we get some new stuff with it. New ways to play. New things are going to happen. So I'm going to put this back together. We're going to throw this recycled thing on top. Try to slide a sleeve back on. which actually worked better than I thought. And we're going to pull that back. So here's the automata cards. So here's another area, the blue. And again, I'm going to get rid of this. And 
without giving anything away, I'm just going to go through this one other deck to kind of show you how it's different. So you remove this and look, you got all kinds of some kind of funky path. This is North America. Here's all the new rules. Here's some other conditions. And like I said, something funky going on there. So there's a whole bunch of different worlds in here. Now, somewhere in here, I should also have new mamas and papas and some other new cards. So I'm thinking that's probably this one without a world on it. That is definitely what it looks like we have here. Yes. So here we have new mama and papa cards. So this is something that adds asymmetry when playing Viticulture. You're going to randomly draw a mama and a papa card. Now props to Stonemeyer. Something Jamie did for this expansion is he swapped the colors of these. So now the mamas are on blue and the papas are on red. Well, if you have the original cards and you mix them together, you can now have mixed marriages. So you could end up with two mamas or two papas for your starting, which I thought was a really cool touch. Or you can just use these on their own if you don't have the existing mamas and papas. You have a full new set here. Sorry, trying to figure out what some of these are. If this is, nope, this is another region. And this is another region of Europe. So the rest of these are regions. So what we've got is new mama and papa cards, uh, automata, and then one, two, three, four, five, six regions to explore in Viticulture World, as well as replacement cards to make it compatible with the rest. Do we have anything underneath? No, nope, no surprises underneath. A uh, very useful box insert. Fits everything well here. I am going to assume there's no way this is going to fit in the core game box. But you never know. It's slightly possible. I will say the insert didn't do the best job of holding these cards in place when I was tipping it left and right, though it seems pretty good now. Maybe now that it's got more weight on it. So that's it. You've got some punch boards. Automata rules, which they called something different, I can never remember, as well as the rules for the cooperative expansion. Again, I didn't want to spoil anything, because I know people are treating this very much like a legacy game. They don't want to know what's in these different worlds until they get there. It does start with the green briar area to introduce it to you. Now, before I go on, these also came with the game. If you go right now and order Viticulture World, you will also get these two packs. So these are two things that Stonemaier is now including with every copy of the game you purchase. Um, if you buy it at your local game store, I'm not sure exactly what the deal is, but I'm sure there's some way to get these. So first of all, is there is a replacement pack of cards. They're with one of the worlds. Jamie ended up including some historical figures with some problematic backgrounds and has done his best to fix that by replacing those cards. So that's what this is. And again, I'll open this up in just a second. Second, he decided to put out a first game continent. So the first time you play, learning to play Viticulture cooperatively, you would use this pack. This is similar to the Fast Play pack or whatever it's called for um, that he did for Wingspan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to the other view. We're going to open these up and just take a quick look at what you get in these packs. Now, if the game makes a second printing, if this expansion gets a second printing, which is looking pretty much like it will, these will just be included in the box. Now, if somehow you picked up the game before these existed, I know Stonemaier will ship these to you for free. Okay, getting back to these packs, I'm going to move Viticulture World out of the way here. And we will start with the replacement cards. So this explains what happened and why um, they go in the South American deck. Um, no, it doesn't actually. It just basically gives you all the information. So it goes in the South American deck, and you have a new start with two new people. And then there's just a QR code. So I got to say props to Jamie for acting on this as soon as he learned of the problem. Then we have the first game continent. So the first place you're going to start, it's a nine card promo pack. So I'm cracking open for the first time here. And it is also Green Gully. So I don't know if my copy came with Green Gully because it's a newer printing. This looks exactly like what I already have. Maybe not. So maybe this is a simplified Green Gully. I'm not sure. But this is the first world you should play in. So the first time you play Viticulture World, you would play with this nine card deck. Um, this does have a before checking victory conditions at the end of this. You may choose to flip the event. I don't know. Haven't played. So there you have it. What you get in the box for Viticulture World. The cooperative expansion for Viticulture from Stonemeyer Games. This box set lets you play the winemaking game viticulture in a whole new way 
cooperatively with one to six players and includes solo play for Viticulture as well. What you've got here is a bunch of different worlds, areas of the world you can visit and play your games in, each with their own challenges. Now, I couldn't tell you much about those because I don't know and I didn't want to spoil anything, so you're going to have to discover those on your own. So thank you for joining me for this unboxing video. Whenever I can get to this to the table, I will be sure to be sharing my thoughts on social media where I can be found everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop One Word. Once we've tried all the different modules, I'll be writing up a review, which you'll be able to find at tabletopbellhop.com and on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash tabletopbellhop. If you appreciate this video and want to show your support, please consider tipping the bellhop at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. Now we're going to sit here. I'm going to have to punch those things out, put them back into the box and get this ready to play. And I got to say, I'm going to have to play a game of viticulture first because this has been a while for me. Thank you for joining me. Good day and game on.